to give God praise and thanks for the blessings and benevolence of our God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord and worship. So will you guys worship with me on this morning in this virtual space as we turn your living room into a life room? Let's go to worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, we we come before you thanking you and praising you, honoring you for the blessings of life and the blessings of this day. We thank you for your loving kindness and your, your tender mercies. We thank you for walking with us every step of the way. We thank you for bringing us over high mountains and through dark valleys. And our strong God, we are able to face the day with faith and courage because we know that you are with us. And so we thank you and we ask that you would have your way, have your way in our lives. Let your will be done in our lives, in the earth as it is in heaven. Our strong God, help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us, help us to love unconditionally. Help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Help us, oh God, to, to love you with all our heart, all our mind, all our being. Oh God, we love you. Help us to show mercy as we want mercy shown to us. Help us to be merciful. Our strong God, we thank you for meeting, supplying our every need. Thank you for being better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Thank you for looking past our faults and meeting and supplying our every need. Now, I ask, oh God, that you will forgive us. Forgive us of our sins and our sinfulness and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us to live our lives holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service I pray that you would bless us individually and collectively with the blessings we stand in need of I pray for this nation I pray for this world and I pray oh God that we your church will be the light that shines in this dark world to point the world to Christ not just with our lips but with our lives help us to be the sermon that someone may never hear but let them see it in our lives 
Lord, we love you. And we thank you and we praise you. And we ask it all in the mighty, matchless name of your darling son, Jesus. And all who love the Lord and agree with this prayer said amen. 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 Put those blessed hands together and give God praise in this place, right where you are. Good morning, my Mount Moriah church family. Deacon Johnny Thompson here. Hey, it's been a long time. I hope that everyone is doing well, staying safe, and staying prayed up. Yes, I know that we all wish that we could be here in our beautiful sanctuary to enjoy the worship experience and the fellowship together as we always have, but make no mistake, God has got this, and he's gonna bring us back better and stronger than ever, so continue to stay encouraged and stay prayed up. Now, in the meantime, I just wanna let you know that this is our Pastor's Appreciation Month, the month of March. This is the month that we celebrate eight years, eight years since we installed Reverend Eric D. Hurst as the seventh pastor here at the Mount. And we're looking forward to having a wonderful month. Some of the things that we have in store, we will have a number of speakers, guest speakers coming to be a part of the celebration. Also, we want you to put down on your calendars March 27th, because on March 27th, that's a Saturday, at 1 o'clock p.m., we're going to have our drive-by celebration out here in the spaciousness of our parking lot, where we're inviting everyone to come out and pay tribute to Pastor Hurst by bringing your gifts of love and show him your appreciation to let Pastor Hurst know just how much he does mean to us. This all leading up to the culmination celebration, which will be on our website as well as on YouTube on the 28th, the Pastor's Appreciation Celebration Service. So that being said, just want to say this. Pastor Hurst, God bless you. Much love to you. Happy anniversary. We love you, man. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says that you should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his course with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. We thank you for tuning in with us another Sunday, another Sunday that he's given us life. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to lift up the name of Jesus and we're going to talk about how great he is. It's a very familiar song. So while you're in the kitchen stirring your food, while you're driving in your car, can you turn it up just a little bit and can you join into worship with us?
So I'll lift my hands. I lift my hands to give you glory. I'll lift up my hands. going on in our minds at this moment God we will make a vow to you that we will forever praise you it may be hard to lift up our hands it may be hard to give you what you deserve but God we're going to give it to you anyways we're going to bless you no matter what we feel we're going to honor you no matter what we feel because if we bless you we know you'll make a way because if we glorify you, we know that you open the door. So God, today we will bless you. God, today we will praise you forever and ever and ever. 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 Our souls will cry forever. Our hearts will cry forever. And we will give you the praise. And we will give you the worship. God, we will forever bless you. We will forever bless you. And God, we simply bless you because you've been good to us. God, we simply bless you because you've been mighty in our lives. And you continue to show yourself strong. You continue to show yourself faithful. 
Even when we're not faithful to you, God, you continue to show yourself faithful to us. So, God, today we thank you simply because you are good. God, you've been so good to us. Each and every day that you allow us to breathe, each and every day that you allow us to open up our eyes and see light, God, those things are, are better. And those things are really little to some people, but God, it's big to us because people are losing their lives every day. So God, we don't take life for granted and we just want to tell you that you've been good. God, we can never praise you enough. God, we thank you because you're good. Yes, Lord. You've been better than good to us, God. If we can be honest, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We neglect ourselves so much. We doubt ourselves. But God, we thank you for never doubting us. Yes, Lord. And we just want to tell you thank you, thank you for being good in our lives. Yes, Lord. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I try, cause you've been so good to me. Can we lift it up? Say, Lord, you are good. You are good. You've been so good. Been so good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. You've been better than good. I can't, I can't praise you enough. I owe you my I life. I owe you my life. I can't praise can't you. praise you enough. Even if I try. Even if I try. You've God, been, been better than good to me so many doors you've opened so many ways you've made so many times you've healed me you've been better so many doors so many doors so many ways so many ways so many times so many times you've healed me better than good to me better than so many doors so many doors so many ways so many ways Better than good to me. So many doors. So many doors. So many ways. So many ways. So many times. So many times you heal me. Better than good to me. Better than so many doors. So many doors. So many ways. So many ways. So many times. So many times you heal me. Better than good to me.
to me. Better than so many doors. So many doors. God, we thank you for being good to us. God, we don't just thank you for open doors, but we thank you for the closed doors in our life. God, at the time, we couldn't understand why you closed the door. But God, the more that we decided to seek you and the more that we decided to pray to you, God, we thank you for closing the door. You closed the door to doubt. You closed the door to fear. And we thank you for closing the door. We thank you for closing the door. So now we can walk in you, Jesus. 
Jesus. And now we can walk in your will. And now we can fulfill your plan. Now we can fulfill your purpose. So we thank you for closing doors. You've been better than good to me. God, you've been so good. You've been so good. God, you've been so good to me. One more time, can you put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus? And can you shout to heaven, God, I thank you for being better than good. you're good honestly you're better than good but our vocabulary is limited so I can say you're good you're great and it still will be an understatement but I just thank you oh God like my grandfather used to say if I had 10,000 tongues it wouldn't be enough to tell you just how good you are just how good you've been hallelujah hallelujah thank you for your goodness thank you for your grace amen if you have your bibles would you go with us to the book of psalms and we want to look at psalm 27 today i'm gonna read the first six verses for our sermonic spotlight today I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of God's Holy Word. And if you're physically able where you are, would you stand in honor of the Word of God? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me, to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumble and fall. And though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter. In the day of trouble, he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He'll set me on a high rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy I will sing and make melody to the Lord sisters and brothers for the next few moments that are ours to share I simply want to talk to you from this thought hope in the midst of your battle hope in the midst of your battle. Gracious God, I come before you like the psalmist, asking that you would allow us to behold great wonders out of your law. I pray like the Apostle Paul that you'd allow me to preach not with enticing words of my own wisdom, but in a demonstration of your Holy Spirit and power, that I might make known the mysteries of your gospel. To the end that you and you alone are glorified and magnified, that the saints would be edified and multiplied, that Satan would be horrified and petrified, and that sinners would become justified. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 
Sisters and brothers, as I read the, the words of this psalm, I see the imagery of battle being portrayed in these verses. Words like enemies and, and foes and hosts and war and enemies all speak of warfare. Phrases like, though a host encamp against me and though war should rise against me, speak of a battle being waged against David. It appears that he is in a difficult situation, yet it's also very clear from reading these verses that even in the midst of David's battle, even in the midst of the war that he is fighting, that David still has hope. And hope is a powerful thing. G.K. Chesterton said that there is no medicine like hope, no incentive so great, no tonic so powerful as expectation of something better tomorrow. Emily Dickinson in one of her poems said, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul. Barbara Kingslover said, the very least that you can do in your life is figure out what you hope for and the most you can do is live inside that hope not admire it from a distance but live right in it under its roof my brothers and sisters the dictionary describes hope as to have a wish to get or do something or for something to happen or be true especially something that seems possible or likely Hope from the world's viewpoint is just that, what the definition describes. The world sees hope as a wish or a desire. Hope for the world is a longing for something that may or may not take place. The Bible teaches us a vastly different definition of hope. Listen to the words of Jeremiah. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. My brothers and sisters, here Paul, Paul says, now abides faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The world says that hope is merely a fond wish or desire, but the words used for hope in the Bible tell a different story. They teach us that hope is a deep, settled confidence that God will keep his promises. Now, I know you got battles, but my question is, do you have hope? I know you have struggles, but my question is, do you have hope? Are you resting in the sure confidence that God would do just what he said he would do? And that is the essence of hope. And hope is a possession that all of us need in, in, in large quantities. I, I want to look at these verses today while we talk about hope in the midst of your battle. I want to show you from the words of David why you and I have reason to hope in the Lord, even in the midst of our battle. And the first thing that I believe that Psalm 27 teaches us about hope in the midst of our battle is that our confidence in the Lord provides hope. Oh, look at verses 1 through 3. And David begins this psalm of hope by declaring his personal faith in the Lord. Notice the threefold use of the word my in verse 1. David has a personal relationship with God. This is the basic foundation for our hope. Uh, my brothers and sisters, confidence in the Lord. Uh, we have confidence in the person of the Lord. David tells us that God is his light, his salvation, and his strength. There's a tremendous blessing. And these three titles attributed to our God. As light, God delivers his people from darkness. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. As light, God guides our steps and helps us to see in the dark. That's why the psalmist said that his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. And as salvation, God delivers his people from damnation. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come 
into condemnation shall not come into damnation, but is passed from death unto life. My brothers and sisters, as salvation, God secures our soul. And as our strength, God delivers his people from defeat. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As strength, God guarantees our success. And these three great characteristics of God serve to give us hope even in the midst of our battles. Because of who God is, we need not fear the enemy that should arise against us. Satan himself is no match for the sovereign God. But my brothers and sisters, not only uh, in, in, in is God our confidence in the Lord, does it provide hope, uh, but also uh, our confidence in the performance of the Lord. David declares that his present hope in the Lord rests on that which the Lord had done for him. Oh, my brothers and sisters, God didn't fail David in the past, and God didn't fail him in the present. And just like God didn't fail David, God hadn't failed you. When David met the lion and the bear, God gave him the victory over the lion and the bear. When David went up against the Philistine giant, God gave David victory over Goliath. My brothers and sisters, God won't fail you. The same confidence is ours today. The God we serve is unchangeable. As a matter of fact, in Malachi, they record that God says, I am the Lord, and I change not. And Hebrews says uh, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God with the same power that he's always been. He's never, he has never, and he never will change because he's faithful in the past. You can count on God to be faithful right now. Think of all the things that he has done, all the victories that he has won for you, all the enemies that he's vanquished, the mountains he's moved, the victory he's won. Think on these things and remember that God who performed countless, countless wonders in the past is still the same God today. Same God back then, same God right now. And that should give us hope. Not only does our confidence in the Lord give us hope, but secondly, this psalm teaches us that our commitment to the Lord gives us hope. Our commitment to the Lord gives us hope. Not only does living with our faith give us hope, but also living faithful to the Lord provides a measure of hope that can't otherwise exist. David mentions three goals in verse 4. These three goals all arise from a single commitment to serve the Lord faithfully from the heart. Notice how David's commitment to the Lord manifests itself. He's committed to lingering near the Lord. David wants to spend his entire life in the house of the Lord. He wants to be in the place where the Lord dwells and where the Lord's presence is real. And this is a theme David repeated in Psalm 84. There David envies the little birds that make their nests around the tabernacle. They, they can be near the house of God all the time while David cannot. And he has a desire to be where God is, to be in the place where God is worshipped and honored. And that is the heartbeat of David. And that's why the Bible declares that David was a man after God's own heart. And that ought to be our desire as well. We need the same passion to be where the Lord is and where the Lord is honored and worshiped. And I know that we can't come into this sacred space right now because of COVID-19, but soon and very soon, when we're able to gather in this place, I pray that all of us will feel, feel that it is necessary to come and gather in the presence 
of God with the people of God. Thanks be to God. But my brothers and sisters, I think there ought to be a desire to find a place of closeness and intimacy with the Lord. And we can have that place where we can linger in his presence all the days of our lives. If there's a genuine desire to be near him, it'll manifest itself in clear action. There'll be a commitment to prayer. There'll be a commitment to study his word. There'll be a commitment to public and private worship. And those who want to linger near the Lord will find a way. We won't make excuses, but we'll spend time with him. We'll delight ourselves in the Lord, and then he'll give us the desires of our heart. And the beauty of it is that when we make a move toward God, God makes a move towards us. But not only was David committed to lingering near the Lord, David was committed to loving the Lord. David wants to behold the beauty of the Lord. That is, he wants to seek his face. You see, not only is David committed to being where the Lord is, but he's also committed to worshiping the Lord. And that's a worthy goal that all of us should have. And this should be the goal of every believer. If we are going to worship the Lord, we're going to have to do it his way. Jesus told us in John's gospel that they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we have to yield to the spirit of God and worship God for who God is. Not for who we want God to be, but for who God is. See, some of us want God to just be a genie in the bottle that we can rub and then he comes out and we, he grants us three wishes and then we put him back in the bottle and put him on the shelf until we need God again. But if we are going to truly be committed to loving the Lord, then we've got to uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. And as we yield to the spirit of God and worship God for who he is, who, as he's revealed in the word, will be engaged in the business of loving him because you can't read his word and not fall in love with him. You can't read scriptures and passages like God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting. You can't read a uh, text that say God will meet and supply your every need. You, you can't read text that say uh, because of God's mercies, his compassions fail not. We are not consumed. We can't read texts like God is with us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us and not fall in love with God. Well, my brothers and sisters, not only was David committed to leaning and loving uh, my brothers and sisters. Not only was David uh, committed to lingering, rather, and loving on the Lord, but he was also committed to leaning on the Lord. David expresses his desire to call upon the Lord to commune with God, to make requests of God. This is another image of worship. And David here declares his utter dependence upon God. My brothers and sisters, is your dependence on God? Are you committed to leaning on the Lord? Is your commitment to trust God or to trust everybody else? David looks beyond his own abilities and sees the limitless provisions of the Lord. And therefore, David wants nothing more than to be able to call upon the Lord. And the beauty of it is that when you call on God, he ain't looking at his caller ID, trying to determine whether he's going to answer your call. And my brothers and sisters, prayer is a limitless, limitless resource that we have. It ought to be the first shot instead of the last thing we do when we find ourselves in a mel of a hiss. But my brothers and sisters, we have been invited to pray 
We are told, Jesus said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. We've been invited to pray, and we are promised that God will hear and answer our prayers. So we need to learn how to lean and depend on him. Instead of worrying and fear, let us learn to lean on the Lord. I got ahead of myself. It starts feeling good. I ain't ready to tune yet. But that's what the hymn writer was trying to tell us when he said, what a fellowship and what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness. What a peace is mine because I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. And I got a question for you this morning. Are you leaning? Leaning on the Lord. That's what we need to learn how to do. My brothers and sisters, our commitment to him provides hope in the days of our battles. As we linger near him and love on him and lean on him, we can have absolute confidence that he'll see that our needs are met. And my brothers and sisters, not only do we find that our confidence in the Lord provides peace. And not only do we find that our commitment in the Lord provides peace, but thirdly and finally, our comfort from the Lord provides hope. And my brothers and sisters, David says that God has a shelter for us. David tells us that the Lord will hide him in his pavilion. And I think I need to tell you that a king's pavilion was a tent that was erected in the middle of the army's encampment. The tent was surrounded by an army of brave soldiers with all the host of the army camped about. And that's why David said when a host encamps against me, he said his heart wouldn't fear. But my brothers and sister David understood this. Because David himself was a king. And David, I just told you, was uh, in a battle from the verses that we've just read. And so David says that I know how I am as a king. But I ain't talking about my kingdom. I'm talking about the king of kings. And my brothers and sister David said that the tent that's surrounded by these brave soldiers with all the hosts of the army camped about the king's pavilion was the safest place on the battlefield. Those who were fortunate enough to be allowed to enter the king's pavilion were protected by the soldiers and entertained by the king. Come in Mount Moriah. I need you to understand something. That even though you might be in a battle, I need you to understand that God has you secure. God has you sheltered. When God has you sheltered, that simply means that God's got you covered. And I'm so glad that God's got me covered. I made it through some things because God had me covered. I was able to go through the storm and the rain because God had me covered. You were able to make it through your child in tribulation because God had you covered. And my brothers and sisters, as the battle of life rages about us, we are safely tucked away in the king's pavilion. My brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us that our life is hid with Christ in God. Could that be a safer place in all the universe those who have entered into the pavilion are protected by him and entertained by the peace and joy of the king himself this is a promise to those who will abide in the secret place that's what I wanted to tell you that not only does God have a sheltered place, but that sheltered place 
is a secret place. The word tabernacle brings to mind the place of worship. The secret refers to the Holy of Holies. You do know that the Holy of Holies is off limits to everyone but the high priest and he could only enter once a year and he had to have the blood of an innocent sacrifice and my brothers and sisters when the high priest would go into the holy of holies once a year they would tie a rope around his waist he had bells on the bottom of his robe so that they could hear that those on the outside could hear the bells they would know that the high priest was still alive but because if the high priest went into the holies of holies wrong and they didn't hear the bells ringing that meant that the high priest was struck dead and they couldn't go into the holy of holies and retrieve his body so they will pull that rope to bring him out of the holy of holies but my brothers and sisters it is the secret place and don't you know that jesus is our high priest when he died the veil of the temple was rent into the place that separated the rest of the temple from the Holy of Holies was rent in two because our high priest went into the Holy of Holies. It's that secret place. My brothers and sisters, if you can find God in your secret place, God will shelter you. God will take care of you in the king's home. The secret place was called the private residence of the king. And no one could enter without the king's permission. Otherwise, they would face instant death. It's amazing that there's a place of solitude in a world filled with so much craziness. There's a place that we can flee and run to when everything is the battle is raging there's a place that affords us quiet and peace and the presence of God is there those who have learned to abide in him have found that secret place is there anybody who can testify that you found the secret place that God has you sheltered and God has you secured my brothers and sisters not only is it a sheltered place not only is it a secret place but thirdly and finally it's a safe place my brothers and sisters I told you that in the king's tent was the safest place on the battlefield. And I need you to understand that you are in the safest place on the battlefield if you are in the Lord. My brothers and sisters, Jesus said, I lose none of all that the Father has given me. Nobody can take them out of my Father's hand. Why? Because it's the safest place for you and for me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can have hope in the midst of my battle. So my question to you, what battle are you fighting? Is it cancer? Is it sickness? I got hope for you. By his stripes, you are healed. My brothers and sisters, what is your battle? What are you fighting? Is it unemployment? Is it lack of resources? I got hope for you. My God shall supply your every need according to his riches and glory. 
through Christ Jesus. What is your battle? Is it loneliness? I got hope for you. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. What is your battle? I need you to give it up to God, and I need you to have hope in the midst of your battle. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Can you give God praise right where you are? Hope in God. Hope in God. Hope in God. And you will. You will. You will. You'll be all right. You'll make it through. When you can hope in God, you can be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When you find yourself in a fiery furnace. See, God, he didn't take the heat out the fire. He just covered them boys in the fire. Well, how you say that, preacher? Because the men who threw him in, the fire killed them. And so we know he didn't take the heat out the fire. Oh, let's talk to Daniel. Daniel was in a lion's den. But God, I like the way Jerry Black puts it. Jerry Black says that God gave the lions lockjaw. And they couldn't bother Daniel. Oh, shucks. God, he's able. And I hope in the midst of our battle shouldn't be in how much money you got shouldn't be in your net work or your net worth your, 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 your hope your confidence should be in God who cannot fail not that he he, he, he doesn't he, he will fail. No, 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 no. God won't fail. And you can trust God. You can take God at his word. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for our hope. And we pray that you would help us to, to rest our hope in you. Help us, help us, oh God, to, in the midst of our battle, in the midst of our fight, to recognize that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. Oh God, we love you. Somebody is fighting. And they feel like they're fighting by themselves. But help them know that they can have hope in the midst, in the midst of their battle. They can have hope. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Did our hearts not burn as the word of God was shared with us? The word of God declares that his word shall not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which he purposed. And we know that if you don't have a relationship with God the Father, through God the Son, that the purpose of that word was to invite you to that relationship. And it's as simple as A, B, C. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God that he lived the life that we should have lived and died the death that we deserve to die, for that God raised him from the dead. And then C, confess that belief with your mouth. It's as simple as ABC. And if you do that, the Bible declares that you shall be saved, that you are saved. And if you made that declaration and that decree today, would you comment in the chat and let us know, would you? Send us an email or give us a call so that we can celebrate with you your new relationship with God the Father through God the Son.
praise God for you. And we thank God for you. As you get your, your elements ready so that we can commemorate and celebrate the death of the Lord Jesus Christ until he comes. For on the night in which Christ was betrayed, he and the disciples were in what the Bible calls the upper room. And the Bible says that Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat, you eat it in remembrance of me. Church of the living God, let us all eat together. And likewise, when he had took the cup and supped, he said, this is my blood, which is shed for you. It's the seal of the New Testament. And as often as you drink it, you drink it in remembrance of me. Church of the living God, let us all drink together. Now, when they finished, they went out into a garden. We're not going out into a garden, but into a mean, cruel world. So I want to encourage you to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Gracious God, we, we thank you for the privilege to fellowship, to praise and worship your holy name, to commemorate and celebrate the sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross to save sinners like us so we thank you for our communion we thank you and ask that you would bless us individually and collectively with the blessings that we stand in the need of we thank you oh god for the privilege to worship you through giving we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver that both will be used for the furtherance and the upbuilding of your kingdom. And we know we can't beat you giving no matter how hard we try. And so for that, we're thankful. And our strong God, we ask that you will continue to bless us and keep us. Continue to make your face to shine upon us and continue to be gracious unto us. Continue to lift up your countenance upon us and grant us your peace. A peace that the world did not give and therefore the world cannot take away. A peace that surpasses all understanding and a peace that will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Now may trouble neglect us. May our neighbors respect us. And may angels protect us. And when you call, may heaven accept us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I love you.